Hi all, uh, today I plan to take up another example to show you how to calculate the ship's latitude using the meridian passage uh, altitude of the sun. So this is example number four and if you have not watched my previous examples, uh, all the uh, videos and the links to the videos are in the description section below. So please make sure you watch those videos as well and practice all the questions for a thorough understanding of this topic all right so let's get started uh, like i said today's focus is on meridian passage calculation in many books it's also called marpas and uh, we will take sun as an example of a celestial body and this is example four in today's example the question is set on the 27th of october 2004 DR position or the dead reckoning position is 49 degrees 55 minutes north 150 degrees uh, 0 minutes west the sextant meridian altitude of the sun's lower limb now lower limb is something you have to highlight in the question so highlight it uh, the sextant altitude of the lower limb was 27 degrees 19 minutes index error was nil and the height of i was 10 and half meters 10.5 meters what you have to do is find the ship's time of meridian passage what time on the ship uh, will the meridian passage occur and you also have to calculate the ship's latitude at the time of the meridian passage so two things so let's find out the first thing uh, that is a ship's time of meridian passage so to do that you have to go into the nautical almanac for 2004 and for 27th of october as you see here on your screens so this we have is 27th of october uh, 2004 is the almanac uh, for sun sun's column is here but this is not the column we have to go into you have to go and look at the extreme uh, right hand corner here this is the uh, column you have to look under and you can see for sun and for the day of 27th of october the meridian passage or mar pass time is given as 11.44 this is the time you have to take to begin your calculation so you go back to the calculation and what you have in the almanac is the local mean time for meridian passage so the meridian passage time uh, is the time given in local mean time all right local mean time is based on the mean sun which we assume takes exactly 24 hours for the sun, earth to rotate around all right um, because at the earth we feel it's the sun that's rotating but sun is stationary it's us who are rotating so anyway we are basing the local mean time on the mean sun the local mean time is 11 hours 44 minutes on 27th of october at which the meridian passage will occur but we need the ship's time so to do that we will apply the longitude in time correction or the lit correction longitude in time uh, is known as lit and we will apply the correction based on whether it's east or west longitude now in the question it is a west longitude so what we will do is you can see we will calculate the longitude in time by dividing the longitude given to you in the question by 15. so the longitude here is 150 degrees west 150 divided by 15 is exactly 10 hours so because it's time we have converted longitude from degrees and minutes into hours and minutes so 150 divided by 15 is 10 hours so lit west gmt is the best or longitude in time west gmt is the best that means if you have west longitude and you are applying it to the lmt you will be adding it to the lmt to make the gmt best lit west gmt best gmt best means gmt should be more than lmt all right so lit east gmt least so if it was east longitude you would have subtracted it from the lmt to obtain the gmt in this case lit is west gmt should be best so you will add it if you add 10 hours to 11 in the morning you get 21 hours 44 minutes and it's still the same date of 27th of october that's your gmt meridian passage to calculate your ship's time of meridian passage in this case it's quite easy you have to find out the zone the zone in this case is based on the lit now if the lit here is 10 hours and you are in west longitude your zone will be minus 10 all right because when you're in west longitude you are behind gmt gmt is ahead of you 
all right so how this works is if this is a zero 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 degrees of longitude as you go east as you go east you start adding hours every 15 degree of longitude so the first seven and a half degrees on either side east and west is a zone zero you don't add anything seven and a half degrees west so this zone is zero zone zero you don't add any hours but as you go east from seven and a half degrees for every 15 degrees you add one hour and for every 15 degrees going towards west you will subtract one hour that is why your zone if you are in west longitude you are behind gmt gmt is ahead of you to find out the ship's time you will base it on lit based on lit in this case lit is 10 hours so you will apply straight away minus 10 because you're in west zone if it was 9 hours 32 minutes it would still be minus 10 but if it was 9 hours 27 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes anything less than 30 minutes it would have been minus 9 so all this i have discussed in my previous examples please watch those examples so because uh, your ship's time you on the ship you are behind gmt you will subtract 10 hours again from gmt to find out your ship's time now i know in this case you will say but lmt is same as ship's time uh, why do we have to calculate it again well in this case it's the same because you are exactly subtracting 10 hours and adding 10 hours but sometimes it will be different because lit in this case is exactly 150 divided by 15 but in some case it could be let's say 150 degrees uh, 47 minutes and you have to divide it by 15 your answer would be in hours minutes and seconds and lit we apply lit in hours minutes and seconds but when we apply zone always we apply the round number it's either 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 we don't apply it in hours and minutes it's only in only in hours all right unless stated otherwise in the question anyhow so we keep going we have found out the ship's time of meridian passage but for our calculations what we need is the gmt time of meridian passage because this is the time we will be using to enter the nautical almanac again to find out the declination of the sun for 21 hours and then we'll be applying our d correction for 44 minutes to get our corrected declination for 21 hours 44 minutes which is the gmt time so let me erase all this so that you guys don't get confused all right so we go back into the nautical almanac for 27th of october and for 27th of october it's right here on the left hand side is the gmt time and we need it for 2100 hours so 2100 hours is here but we need it for sun so we have to go to the sun's column and we need the declination so the declination is 13 degrees 7 minutes south 13 degrees 7 minutes south all right for 21 hours at this point also note down the d value of 0 0.8 the d value is at the bottom of the table you know down the d value of 0 0.8 then you go back into the calculation and you see that i have put declination value as 13 degrees and 7 minutes south the d value we'll put here 0 0.8 because we'll be using this d value to go into the increments page for 44 minutes to find out the declination correction so when we go back into the nautical almanac you also have to see the declination as they go from 13 hours to 14 or 21 hours to 22 hours the declination is increasing from 7 minutes it's going up to 7.9 so from 21 hours to 22 hours if the declination is increasing for 21 hours 44 minutes the declination should be increasing from 7 minutes so when we go into the increments page for 44 minutes whatever correction we get from there we have to add to the declination value so here we have 44 minutes so 44 minutes is here at 00, 00 seconds so 00, 00 seconds the sun is here but what we need is the d correction value so we have the d value here and the correction value to the next column so our d value is 0 0.8 and the correction value is right next to it 0 0.6 so you can pause the video at this stage here and watch it carefully as to how i got this value but i'll go back and resume with the calculation so you go into one column find the d value and for the corresponding d value you find out the corresponding correction value 
so i have put 0 0.6 here i have added it because we saw that as the declination was going from 21 to 2200 hours declination was increasing so obviously for 21 hours 44 minutes declination should be increasing and that's why we add the correction now the section altitude given to us in the question is 27 degrees 19 minutes the index error is nil so it doesn't matter our observed altitude will be same as section altitude in this case because there is no index error so our observed altitude is 27 degrees 19 minutes now our height of i or dip correction height of i is also known as dip correction is for a height of i of 10.5 meters so we have to use this value go back into the nautical almanac and for a height of height table you can see here the height of tide table is and the dip is here the height of i is given here in meters this is the meters column this is the feet column we need the meters column for a height of i of 10.5 meters which will lie between 10.3 and 10.6 our height of i correction is minus 5.7 so again pause the video here watch how i got this value so for a dip correction we go into the height of i column for meters if the height of i is in meters as it is in this case the height of i is 10.5 meters which lies between 10.3 and 10.6 for that a corresponding correction value is minus 5.7 you don't have to interpolate it for minus uh, for 10.5 you can just take this value and straight away go back to the correction for minus 5.7 so again no interpolation required and height of i correction is always negative so you will always subtract it as you saw in the table as well you get an apparent altitude value of 27 degrees 13.3 now here you have to note down two values the apparent altitude value 27 degrees 13.3 you have to note down the month which is october and you have to note down the fact that it is sun's lower limb these are the three things that you have to take into account because we have to find the total correction for total correction we have to go back to the same table from where you got your height of i and you can see the total correction for sun is in this column here but you have to see the month the month is october so you will go in this column here and it is lower limb of the sun so you will go under this column here the apparent altitude value is the first column which is 27 degrees 13.3 which will lie between here 2634 and 2750 again no interpolation required straight away the lower limb value correction is plus 14.4 you will take that value go back into the tables and you will apply that straight off plus 14.4 what you get is true altitude 27 degrees 27.7 minutes now here i have named the true altitude as south the instruction here is name it same as bearing now what does this mean and how i have named it south for that it's a simple thing basically in the question some hint is given to you in this case your dr latitude is given to you as 49 degrees north so what you do is you project yourself onto the celestial sphere you draw a vertical line this is only for median passage calculations Put a dash here and call it Q. This is your equinoxial, also known as your celestial equator. Alright? This is like a reference point. Now in reference to your celestial equator, if I project your ship's position onto the celestial sphere, you are somewhere here, north of the equator, because your DR latitude, your DR latitude is 49 degrees 55 minutes north. And I call you Z this is the zenith of the observer the next thing that you do is look at the declination of the sun the declination of the sun is 13 degrees 7.6 minutes south that means the sun is lying south of the equator here we call it x this is the sun and this value here is 13 degrees 7.6 minutes south so now you have to see where is the body bearing from you the body is bearing south of you so the body is bearing south of you x is bearing south of z and that's why true altitude is named same as bearing that means we will name true altitude south all right then you will subtract it from 90 degrees of course you take the smaller number and subtract it from the bigger number so it will be 90 degrees minus 27 degrees 27.7 minutes and you get your true zenith distance tzd stands for true zenith distance which will be 62 degrees 32.3 minutes and now you name it north because it is always named opposite to true altitude so if you name true altitude south you will name it opposite to true altitude this is north then write down your declination value which is 13 degrees 7.6 south 
the rule here is same names add different names subtract that means if they are same names if both are south you will add it however if they are different names that is if one is north and the other is south you will subtract one from the other and retain the name of the larger value so i will subtract one from the other and i will retain the name of the larger which is larger the true zenith distance which is named north is larger so north will be the latitude so simply subtract it get the value and name it north that's your answer that's your ship's latitude based on the observation of the median passage of the sun so your dr latitude is like an estimated latitude based on the ship's course and speed and the uh, at an earlier time but due to currents and winds and tides the ship may not reach at the dr latitude so if you are getting confused as to why we calculated latitude when the ship's latitude is given remember the latitude that is given to us is the dr latitude that's not the accurate latitude the accurate latitude provided you have done everything correctly and provided you have taken a good altitude is based on the latitude that you calculate is based on the ship's uh, observation of the celestial body of the sun during the meridian passage meridian passages when the sun reaches its highest altitude during the passage of its day and when the sun's meridian is aligned with the observer's meridian on the ship so let me know guys what you thought about this video uh, i look forward to your uh, comments and feedback and how i can improve these videos thanks guys and bye